All right, I was just playing in the garage here and I thought uh, some of the waveforms would be fun for you guys to take a look at. Um, so I have a very simple circuit here. It's, it's a boost converter. So I have pulses coming in to turn on this uh, transistor and they, they pull down on this and energize this coil. And then when it lets go, then the ener energy in that coil can, can release and make it through this diode and, and get stored on this capacitor. So that's a boost converter. I've done a video before on boost converters. Um, but yeah, so a simple boost converter. Um, I, I build, I'm building one out of scratch right now. Um, I have an inductor and, and uh, this is all I have in there, inductor, a transistor, and, uh, and these two components. So this is the little transistor that I'm using. It's kind of a, it's kind of a fun little part, it's super tiny. Um, I bought a bunch of them off of eBay, I think, because they were so cheap. <laughs> and they have great specs, uh, 30 volts at 35 amps. That's, that's, that's pretty good all, all by itself. And then 0 0.008 on resistance, 0 0.008 ohms. That's just, that's just nuts. That's a really, really good one. Um, so uh, I, I, it's just a tiny little package. You think, well, like, how do you get any power out of that thing? How's, it, how's that going to work? And if you do a couple of calculations here, you, you know that power equals I squared R and um, yeah, 35 amps, it, it can get up to like 10 watts. Okay, that's, that's too much. But look at, at 10, at 10 amps, you're only looking at 0.8 watts, right? So this little guy's gonna be perfectly fine at 0.8 watts all by itself without a heat sink on it. So it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Anyway, I'm certainly not driving that hard. I'm driving probably, I don't know, amp or something, maybe. Um, Anywho, um, let's um, let's take a look at some waveforms on the on on the oscilloscope here. Um, like I said, I've got these pulses coming in, and we're going to be looking at uh, a scope probe here, right here on the output, and then a scope probe right here on the filtering. Right, so this is before the diode, and this is after the uh, rectification. Right, and so let's take a look at that, and this should look pretty familiar. We have a, a we have a, a pull down on the uh, inductor and then let it go and it flies up and then the, and uh, it resonates. So, um, and then the output is going to be this line, this line up here. Okay. And uh, we've kind of showed that before in a different video. If I uh, slow down the uh, pulse rate or speed up the pulse rate, there you go. Look at that. And then if I, um, take the way the pulses all together, then we get a flat line. That's because the transistor is no longer doing any work and it, just 12 volts is going through the inductor and you're just getting 12 volts out. So it's just sitting there at 12 volts. So when you whack it on and off, uh, you're starting to do the boost conversion and um, it's, up, it's up at the top here. Now, this thing is asymptotic to this 12 volts, right? So this ringing will finally settle out at that 12 volts until it gets another another uh, negative going pulse. Um, so uh, this ringing, yeah, so this is asymptotic to whatever input voltage you have. If I vary the input voltage, uh, that goes up and down. Okay, so I'll put it back here at 12 volts. And um, yeah, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, so one of the things that's that's interesting is why does it, why does it go boing? Why, why does it ring? Okay, this is a ring. Why does it ring? Why does it do that? Uh, whenever you have something that oscillates, uh, you have to have some type of, you know, circuit and you need an inductor and you need a capacitor. So we ha certainly have an inductor, right? Um, we have this big inductor. It's 330 microhenries. 330 microhenries. Uh, 30 microhenries. All right, so where's the capacitor? Well, uh, if you just take all of this out there, it still rings. Uh, where's that capacitor? Um, it's the self capacitance of the inductor, okay? So it's some windings. You have these windings, okay? So they've got these windings. And between each winding is a little capacitor. So there's a little capacitor there, there's a little capacitor there, there's a little capacitor there. So all of these, when you have these wires right next to each other, 
it causes a little capacitor. And so all these little capacitors add up to some value, and that is the resonant frequency. It's the self-resonant frequency um, of the inductor. So yeah, it gets to resonate all by itself. But what if we, uh, what if we help it out? Uh, what if we go ahead and put in a resonant circuit all by, like this? We're, we're going to add a capacitor. And now we've created this, we call it a tank circuit, or it's a parallel, parallel resonant circuit. You have a uh, capacitor and an inductor, and we're going to add this, so we won't rely on the self, self capacitance. We'll rely on an external capacitance. So let's see what that does. So I'm going to see if I can find it here on my bench. Yeah, here, this, uh, this, one's, this one may be okay. Um, this is a 0 0.01 microfarads, okay? So we're going to add 0 0.01 microfarad, microfarad, okay. Um, so let's do that. I'm just going to hold it on. I'm going to hold it on there while you look at the, uh, while you look at the picture. All right, so let's add that. And boom, look at that. It slows it down. Okay, so there's self-resonance. And then here is with 0 0.01 microfarads, so it slowed it way down. So that's really cool. So we can see that we've uh, we've changed the uh, changed the frequency of this uh, of this circuit by putting in the 0 0.01. I guess we can measure the two frequencies. That might be fun to do. Let's do that. Let's measure those. Uh, let's measure those two frequencies. See if we can do that. Um, let's see here. Let's, let's see. We're going in channel two. We want to measure frequency. And it says something, but I'm going to go way out here so it sees just that. So it's 430 kilohertz. Is I'm reading, reading that right? Yeah, 430 kilohertz. Okay. And then let me put on that capacitor. Let me write that down for 30 kilohertz. Okay. And then let me uh, hold that other capacitor on there. Now that I've just lost it, there it is. Okay. Hold that one on there. And now we've gone to 87 hertz. 87 hertz or kilohertz? 87 kilohertz. Yeah, 80, 87, 87 kilohertz. 87 kilohertz. All right, so let's go back here. Okay, so what can we... We'll do a thought experiment here, okay? So some capacitance made it 430 kilohertz, and some capacitance made it 800... I mean, 87 kilohertz. So what's that ratio? Let's get out of here get out our calculator here. Okay, we've got 430. Oops, got to turn it on. 430 and 87. Divide. So that's a factor of five. Okay, there's a factor of five, uh, five difference. So what do you think this self-inductance is, uh, self-capacitance is? Well, it's one-fifth of 0 0.001, right? So 0 0.001 fifth. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, let's look at a couple other waveform tricks up here while we've got it on the screen. I thought the self-inductance thing was, the self-capacitance thing is cool. There's also self-inductance for capacitors and stuff. Um, yeah, so let's add a load to the output, okay? We're going to add a load. Um, boom. So the, the, the load lowers the voltage. You see it come down there, okay? So here's without a load, and here's with a 3.3K load. So not much of a load, but 3.3K. It pulls it down, and the waveform changed a little bit. It's still ringing, it's still asymptotic, still the same frequency of ringing and stuff. What happens is this little section here expands a little bit, and it means the circuit's doing a little more work. This is the point where the capacitor is actually having to be charged with this voltage. Uh, this is where the uh, circuit is actually inputting power into that um, into that capacitor. Um, 
there's a there's a little difference in voltage between the top here and the bottom here and that's the diode that's the 0.6 volts of that diode right so let's add a little bit more loading so as we add the loading you can see it it, it has to do more and more work to keep that to keep that capacitor charged up because you're you keep pulling it off with the load um, so you don't have to have you don't you're not getting as much voltage gain you're still getting some voltage gain because this is 12 volts and this is still higher um, but you're having to actually uh, add more power into that to, in that capacitance. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, I thought uh, pretty nice, nice regular waveform. So they were nice and they were nice to look at. A lot of times, uh, switching power supplies are very, very noisy and they're they're hard to see what's going on. But uh, I thought this was a, a pretty good picture. So we learned about. Uh, uh, we learned about the self-resonance. That's pretty cool. We kind of measured the self-resonance in uh, in microfarads. Um, so we'll go back down here. We have, uh, for those who want to really know, 0 0.01 microfarads divided by 5 is 0 0.002. Right? I think you probably do that in your head, but 0 0.002 microfarads of just self-resonance, right? Um, it is a, it is a tight, tightly packed little coil here, and there are quite a few lines on it. Um, so yeah, it all, all adds up to 0 0.002 microfarads. Pretty, pretty amazing.